Good morning, Comic Book fans. Welcome back to the Kapow Comics Best of 2023 Countdown. Um, you may hear a bit of work going on in the background. I do apologise for this one. I've waited as long as I can to do this video and start time to upload it. Um, I've had to put up with this for several hours, so I do apologise for the slight awkwardness of the sound. That being said, we did review Swan Songs today. Uh, this is an odd one to be on our Best of the Year thing for two reasons. Um, number one... It's the only thing in our top ten list that I have not been pulling every single issue of. Um, there's reasons for that one, and it ties into why I do like this quite a lot. Um, and also, it's the first one, I think the only one that's going to be an anthology as well. And I usually don't review anthologies that much. I find it quite frustrating to have to talk about every single different person involved in it, and what they bring to the table, especially when my usual format of reviews is five minutes long. <laughs> but, in this particular case, it's doing an anthology thing correct. Um, basically it's the same writer with a, an overarching theme which is loose enough that every single story feels individual and each artist brings what they want to it. Now the fact is, W. Axel Prince has done something like this before and I did not enjoy it. Uh, he did Ha Ha, uh, which had just the theme of clowns and a bunch of artists just got to do clown pictures and stories about clowns and that felt like a little bit too tight of a focus and I genuinely stopped caring fairly quickly so when I knew he was doing another anthology I did not put my name down for it I saw some of the talent involved and thought you know what maybe I'll pick up a couple here and there if it's like an artist I really like and I can check it out turns out I was kind of wrong let's put it on my list and genuinely annoyed that I don't own every single issue that's coming out and some of them are not available to order anymore but I am going to pick up the collection when it comes also unusual because it's not finished yet and it's a mini series, it's all one issue to come. Um, but all that being said, I do have to go into each issue a little bit more than I usually would do for this kind of review. Usually I do more overarching kind of ideas, but because each one is a different theme tied to this idea of the end, and each artist brings their own thing to it in unique ways, it is worth actually getting into what each issue does. Now this will involve some I don't want to say spoils per se, I don't think you can, I'm not going to tell you much that isn't just on like the, uh, the blurb for each issue, but if you do want to read them yourself before you have me talk about them to you, I totally understand that, and you can go and check them out later, and then come back to us, and this video will still be here, it's wondering about YouTube, uh, I've not been uh, accused of plagiarism, so all my stuff is still out there and available. Um, so we're going to start from the top, and issue one was the one that I was like, yeah, if I was going to pick up any, I probably would have done, because it's Simmons. And I'm a really, really big fan of Simmons. He did the Department of Truth, and he's now doing Universal Monsters Dracula, and he even did the Joe Hill one, which I like way more than I thought I would. Um, also, he generally leans more into horror, and I was like, yeah, okay, Ice Cream Man, the Axel Prince's most famous thing, it's certainly going to be horror-themed. And this is one that's actually very much end-of-the-world-esque kind of story. The Doomsday Clock is ticking down, the world is going absolutely crazy, and it's a story about one kid doing a nice thing for somebody in the midst of all this horror. It's basically this sign of, yeah, there will always be people who are willing to step up and do something for you because they care about you in the same way you care about them. It also totally shows off how good Martin Simmons is doing a cityscape kind of stuff. His three-point perspective is off the chart. And also, it's beautiful, and the painting is fantastic, and the story is lovely and heartwarming, even though it probably shouldn't be because it's also really, really dark. Uh, there's one by Casper Wynyard, uh, so I'm saying by, these are the artists that are actually going to be doing it. It's all still written by Maxwell Prince. But Casper Wynyard's story is basically uh, the end of a marriage. It's two people going through a bitter, acrimonious divorce, but doing it through a variety of different scenic choices. There's like, they are at some points fighting as gladiators and knights in shining armour. And it's kind of cool that his art style, which is big, oh, top flam boy, gets to be used in a variety of different ways here, and the colouring is really, really deep and rich. And it's another one which weirdly has some hope to it. Not in the way I, I thought, I, especially not in the way other ones do. This is definitely an end. But it shows that it hurts more when something ends when you cared about it so much. And I take from it that it's good to care. Like, being hurt because something ends that you loved, that... That is a bad thing, don't get me wrong, but it's all, it is bittersweet, and it does come with the realisation that at least you had something to lose, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, third one, uh, Philippe Andrade, uh, another end of the world one, and Andrade's artwork is beautiful for this one. It is very washed out and pastely, but it works spectacularly, because this is the end of the end of the world. This is the idea that there is a chance to come back from an ending. It is a very hopeful story in this one, but it also is the end of it because it seems no matter what humanity is trying to do to get back from uh, terrible apocalyptic endings, there were still going to be people who are like, no, 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 I, I'm still scared of outsiders, I still don't know what's going on, I'm still going to attack instead of speak, and it, it is very, very bitter, but it also is lovely at times as well. 
the next one, uh, end of sentence. This is the one that is, if anything, definitely more what I expected from Maxwell Prince, and it's also the one where the artwork is not as flamboyant. It's all, an artist I wasn't particularly with, uh, familiar with, uh, Caitlin uh, Yarsky. I actually have notes for this one because there's some people I'm not 100% familiar with. This is literally more work than I've done for any of my uh, YouTube reviews ever. I usually just do five minutes of me talking to a camera just barely thinking about what I'm going to say before. And I actually have notes here. Um, but Caitlin Yarsky has done some stuff uh, which I wasn't really aware of, but her style is far more down to a far more realistic based kind of stuff. And it works really well for this one. It's a guy who's come out of jail and has been taught to go and do one last job. It also plays around with language in interesting ways and form interestingly. Um, it is the one which has less hope to it. It is very, very bittersweet, if anything. The bitterness is uh, more at the top here. It's when somebody's trying to get out, when he's trying to end something, and other people won't let them leave. It is the most realistic down-to-earth one, but also the one that has, in its own way, weird little twists in the tale, which kept me interested. Um, it's certainly not my favourite of them, but if this is the one that's like not anyone's favourite, it's still a great one to read and enjoy, and I would highly... I would definitely say, don't ditch it because of this one, if all the rest of them are like on a slightly higher level. And I don't want to... I don't want anyone thinking I'm having a hard time with Caitlin Yarsky... It is really, really good, exceptionally competent artwork. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it, but all the other artists bring something a little bit more distinct to it. Speaking of which, uh, issue five, Alex ekman Lorne uh, did The Death of Anadonia. Um, and I didn't know anything about this guy at all, hence me again having the name down. Uh, but it's genuinely amazing. It reminds me of Dave McKean uh, in his prime. There is... So much work in multi-layered artistry in this one. Uh, there's collage, there's hand painting. It is the most dreamlike of them. And it's also the one in terms of story which have hit me a little bit more. It's a guy who effectively has anhedonia, the death of joy, the death of pleasure. And he's trying to get help from it, for it. Uh, and he ends up going through all his memories uh, in a mind palace kind of way. Hence the dream-like ethereal state of the story. But he managed to latch onto this idea of what it used to be like for him. Like... I'm not entirely sure we get a full explanation of why he no longer was able to feel joy, but he remembers what it was like to feel joy at some point, and in little ways managed to grab hold of that. Now, for me, I, I don't suffer from Anadonia. I am actually a really happy kind of guy, uh, because I still have a little bit of me which always remembers what it was like to be a kid. I personally don't think I've changed that much since I was a teenager. Some parts of my personality are more, some are less, but I'm the same kind of guy, and I enjoy a lot of the same things, so I still see joy in a lot of things that I used to. It's fantastic. So seeing the story of somebody who managed to reclaim and recapture that, that meant something. That really hit me. It's genuinely lovely. Like I said, the story's been finished. There's one more to come. Um, I remember rightly, it's the artist who actually did Ice Cream Man with him, whose name I've forgotten off the top of my head. Uh, and weirdly, I didn't write that one down. I only wrote the five that were already out. Uh, this is how much preparation I put in for these things. Uh, but it also looks to be something very, very close to what they've done in the Ice Cream Man before. Basically, they're looking at the idea of children's artwork and literature and having fun with it. Very, I think they've done like, some um, Schultzy kind of stuff before. Uh, or some... Oh... The guy did uh, The Grinch. I've forgotten the, actual, uh, the, the writer's name for this one. This, uh, he, he's not big in this country, but I grew up in an American school system for a very strange reason. So I am aware of him, but I, I generally don't remember his name right now. But they do this kind of thing. That The artwork style leans into it, and uh, Prince's writing is perfect for it. He has this wonderful knack for doing oddly formatted rhymes, and I, I genuinely think it's going to be an amazing end. And even if it isn't, even if it's just as good as the rest of them, that is still very, very high quality. Because when it comes to anthologies, they are hard to do for multiple reasons. Um, I remember Mitchell and Webb in their sketch show did an actual thing about the rise and fall quality of sketches, which applies very well to anthologies. Another reason I don't like reviewing them. You can basically just say, pick up any anthology and be like, some's good, some isn't, and that's the review of every anthology. The fact that it's gone for the same writer but different artists really helps because the unique look at the world through their lens is very different than if it's just the same artist and different writers, which is what they tried to do for Silvercoin and didn't land for me quite so effectively. It also is self-contained. You've got the entire thing in six issues, unlike it's a 2000 AD where there's constantly stopping and starting and jumping on points are hard to find. This is everything I really wanted out of an anthology, and it was so much fun to read. It is so full of heart and warmth and love in the darkest of times. When we are heading towards an end of something, being told that it's okay that there is a reason for it and we shouldn't feel too sad because of the things that have come before it. That's that's a good message to get and I've really, really enjoyed it. 
Uh, that's it for this one, though. Um, I'm almost in ten minutes. <laughs> Way longer than I usually do these things. But this is only number eight. We've got a whole bunch more to come right up until Christmas Eve. Until I get back to you, though, look after each other, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.